Good afternoon. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'd like to call this meeting of the Board of Commissioners to order. First item is Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, and next, uh, number, item number three is the invocation of Commissioner Nard is uh, not here today, so I'm going to offer the invocation. Father, thank you for every public servant involved in governing our cities, our states, and our country. Help them to see that we are your servants first and foremost. And please empower us citizens to give them the respect due their office, whether we agree with them or not. Give our leaders the grace to do justly, the love and mercy, and walk humbly before you in all integrity. May they defend the oppressed, protect the virtuous, and discipline the wrongdoers. Please give them the wisdom to enact laws and regulations that foster an environment where every citizen can flourish spiritually, socially, and physically. We ask this in the name of your Son. Amen. Amen. Item four is adoption of the agenda. I need a motion Romano to adopt. adopts the agenda. Zinner support. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the minutes from dated uh, December 28, 2021. So moved. Motion has been made and supported. Any discussion on the minutes? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 6 is public participation. This is the first opportunity for public participation for those who wish to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any item on today's agenda. There is a second opportunity for public participation for those who wish to speak on any issue. Um, is there anyone from the public that wishes to be heard on any item on the agenda? Anybody from the public wish to be heard under public participation on the agenda? One more time, anyone from the public? Seeing no one will close public participation. Item seven is proclamations. First proclamation is a proclamation committing a Judge Swatowski on his retirement from the Macomb uh, Court. Um, we're offering the uh, motion uh, with the changes that have been offered by Commissioner Kleinfeld. Um, I need a motion to approve. So motion. Moved, is it supported by? Matuzic. Okay, um, please vote. Now that motion's uh, put, I want to make the presentation to, to the Honorable Judge. Without indulging, I'll indulge, I'll read this to you. So there's a lot, you've done a lot in your career, and I think it's fitting that we uh, acknowledge them in the writing. Whereas the Macomb County Board of Commissioners would like to commend the Honorable Mark Sotolsky for serving Macomb County judicial system for the past 33 years as both a judge for the 39th district as well as a judge for the 16th uh, Circuit Court. Whereas Judge Mark S. Sotolsky earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Michigan in 1973 and went on to graduate from Boston University School of Law three years later. And whereas Judge Mark S. Swatolsky has committed his time to upholding the integrity of the judicial system in Macomb County, while being a private practice law from 1977 to 1988, Judge Swatolsky also served on the 39th District Court Magistrate from 1983 to 88, and began his judicial career when elected to the 39th District Court 
bench in 1988. Judge Smutalski has served as chief judge of that district court from 1991 to 2000. Whereas Judge Mark Smutalski also first was elected 16th uh, uh, Judicial Circuit Judge in Macomb County in, in 2000, he was reelected um, to the Circuit Court bench in 2006, 2012, and 2018. Judge Mark Swatowski was appointed Chief Judge of the 16th um, Judicial Circuit Court and both Macomb County Probate Court and Chief of the Macomb County 16th Judicial Circuit Court at the same time. Judge Swatowski also most recently served as the Family Division of the Circuit Court. And whereas Judge Mark Swatowski co-created and implemented the Veterans Treatment Court, Judge Mark Swatowski was recognized recognized the mentally ill and the trauma of combat and the difficult transitioning into civil life and presided over a program that employs evidence-based approach on addressing unique needs of men and women having bravely served our country. Whereas Judge Mark Swatowski was inducted in the Macomb Hall of Fame by the Macomb County Chamber of Commerce, Judge Mark Swatowski has spoken on many veterans events and was honored by the Wayne State University for his work for veterans. Judge Mark Swatowski was also administered, also administered and honored the oath of, to incoming students of Western Michigan University's Cooley School of Law. Whereas <coughs> Judge Mark Swatowski is held in high esteem by his colleagues and is regularly commended for his intellectual and judicial temperament, it is those traits along with a dignified and courteous demeanor of on the bench and his unique ability to interject humor in his interactions with his colleagues and staff that have made an, an asset to the Macomb County legal community. And whereas retirement will allow Judge Mark Swatowski to pursue his endeavors, such as opening a new business in Mount Clemens and heading, heading to Arbitration and Mediation Service Division in his wife Jody's law firm, Swatowski Law and Consulting in Mount Clemens. Whereas Judge Mark Swatowski's commitment to justice and residents of Macomb County will have a lasting impact Judge Mark Swatowski has honorably served the people of Macomb County with respect and dignity for more than 30 years. It is by these that presents the Macomb County Board of Commissioners, hereby publicly commends, acknowledge, and expresses congratulations to Judge Mark S. Swatowski on the occasion of his retirement. Further be it proclaimed that a suitable copy of this proclamation will be presented to Judge Mark S. Swatowski in testimony to his high esteem in which he is held by the Macomb County Board of Commissioners. All right. Thank very you good. very much. It's a mouthful. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much. Again, thank you so much. You've been an asset. Thank you, me. Commissioner. You've served here before I got here, which, which is pretty. That's an <laughs> that's amazing feat. That's a long feat. time. <laughs> Third years myself, but you have outranked me. So, uh, but uh, congratulations. And uh, thank you very much. Very much. It's my floor. Do yours. I have the floor? You have the floor. All you right. Speak for three minutes. No, I'm just. Yes. Take as much time as you like. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, first of all, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be appreciated, and. Uh, you know, I haven't been here in a while. I, it's, it looks a little different since the last time I was here. I, I was counting the other day, and I, I, I've done 13 budgets as chief judge. And, uh, oh, you know, budgeting, you get in some uh, discussions, let's say, and there are different viewpoints. <coughs> but I've always felt uh, I was dealt with very fairly here. Uh, when we disagree, we, we have our own responsibilities that we have to look out for, for the court in my case, for the entire county in your case. And I always thought we'd had a great working relationship and that when I really needed help, you guys could would help us. And uh, when I like to think we were available when during tough times here. So the uh, I appreciate that support. The uh, I want to introduce my brother. Many of you know Mickey. Uh, I have a few things I want to say about him. Former the, commissioner, uh, we might add. <laughs> My wife, Jody, is not here. Uh, she is in a hearing about three hours from here uh, that the other side didn't adjourn. 
So the, uh, she's a, a trial lawyer. There's a prosecutor here, a good trial lawyer, a very good trial lawyer, and uh, very competitive. So the, uh, you know, it's not a good idea to give a competitive person a little extra motivation, uh, either in the courtroom or at home. And uh, some of you may have that experience with your own spouse. There's a time that you uh, don't want to add fuel to the fire. So uh, suffice it to say that somebody up in some small town in Michigan is in for a rough afternoon. So the, uh, I've had a lot of uh, good times uh, with a lot of the members of the board, present and past. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what it was like to have a brother in government service. So the, uh, you know, you could ask questions. The board is in charge of the money. The city council is in front of the money. There's only one time in 13 budgets that I really got grilled, and it was by a Roseville city councilman by the name of Michael Swatowski. Okay, and it wasn't even on the budget; it was on a budget transfer. And I had called my friend Harold Haw, uh, who was a <coughs> councilman at the time, earlier in the day. This is a night meeting, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And, uh, oh, piece of cake, two minutes. You'll be in and out of there. So they call my budget transfer. And uh, any questions? No hands go up. I'm thinking, oh, no. Down on the end. The hand goes up. Councilman Swatowski. He starts asking me questions. After about three questions, it's very clear to me that he's read my proposal more than I did. Okay? And after a few more questions, I'm wondering whether he realizes I didn't write the proposal. The court administrator is home with his family. He wrote the proposal. I'm looking at everybody else, particularly Harold, and Harold is like, he's your brother. Don't look at me. <laughs> and I, I finally get through, and I go, it passes, despite his reservations on the record. And I go back to my chambers in the building across the parking lot. It's 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night. And I go in the back way where only judges and prisoners can go. And I go down this hallway, and I see my, my, my door is open. And I can hear my TV is on. And I had a sweet deal there. I had a, a total cable. You can watch any channel you want. And as I get closer, I hear it's the council meeting is on. And the two guys that are cleaning up the building, who I know, are watching the council meeting. Up until that night, I was under the impression that nobody watches these meetings. And that taught me that everybody watches these meetings because they say to me, Judge, don't you and your brother talk about this ahead of time? <laughs> you just wasted a half hour of our time. We're, they, we've got union stuff on here. There was a firing issue. They've got stuff to talk about. Why don't you guys straighten that out <laughs> ahead of time? So I'm very proud of my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the one time I've been grilled. Uh, and it wasn't comparable. Uh, again, I appreciate, I have one last request. Um, the Golf League at Gowney is at 4.30 on Tuesdays. And I would ask that you not have meetings on Tuesday afternoon, but if you do, please get my partner out of here timely. He's been waiting on me to get there on time for years, and I would uh, appreciate any help you can give me in that regard. <laughs> Again, partner, thank <laughs> my partner, who carried me last year, is uh, <laughs> Commissioner Haw. And I was admit, I admit to being a little heavy last year, <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. It's a very nice gesture. It's much appreciated. I've enjoyed every minute uh, working in conjunction with you. So thank you. Thank you, Judge. Sometimes he's turned to roast, Judge. Any commissioners want to have any comments, parting comments? Uh, Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Chair. Um, I remember that situation distinctly. 
and I did say, don't you guys get together and talk about this stuff. The only thing worse than having a brother in politics is having one of your friends and neighbors cross-examining his own brother, and I'm in the middle of it. So that situation <laughs> we had to happen one time. I do want to say, Mark, it's been an honor and a privilege um, to know you, uh, if not <coughs> most of my adult life, all of my adult life. The consultation, the conversations we have, not only on the golf course, but otherwise, similar to those with Mickey, um, wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed to be recorded, let's put it that way. We cover a vast array of subjects from when I was mayor to state rep to um, being on the county commission. Um, I've always valued your opinion, uh, your friendship, and we never held back in any of our conversations we ever had with each other. And as far as me getting out on time, it's him getting out on time. And his brother has offered to put Mark on the trading block for next year as my partner if he does not improve, which I said, there's another example of two brothers having to work it out. So God bless, best to you. I know Jody's got your honeydew list already prepared, which was one of the reasons he was really late getting to the golf course and having to leave immediately. The good news is you're not in the middle of an election coming up this year. We went from first place to eighth place, by the way. I just wanted everybody to know that. And I don't expect that to happen again this year. So God bless, and thank you for all you've done. That's all I have, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hawk. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Hi, Mark. Mark and I used to play soccer together with our kids. Um, Emily was six years old at the time, and just so you know, Mark, Emily just turned 30. And uh, he was much bigger, taller, and a much better soccer player than I was, and I was always on the opposite team. I think Mickey always put me with him and, and put Mark on the other side, sometimes with Matt, who doesn't like to lose, by the way. And uh, he would just swat me off like a flea. I just, I could, there was no way I could get control of the ball. My only uh, course of action was to come flying in and build up some velocity and fly into him as fast as I possibly could, hoping to knock him off. The kids had him figured out because they were so little, one would just get between his legs and get him all tangled up and another one would take the ball from him. And uh, one time, uh, we, we played almost every day for a while and out in the cold and the rain and uh, we were out at your house the day after Thanksgiving in the rain with Sponko and a whole bunch of kids and we went inside and Roma said to me, there's something seriously wrong with you people. But I want you to know that my kids, um, they learned an awful lot from the two of you. And I think that they they carried all of that through school, through their activities in school, and on into life. So I really appreciate the time that you spent with us and our kids. And um, the last thing I'll say is uh, the only thing that almost broke up my friendship with your brother was a three and a half hour lit drop at 10 degrees, I think out in Sterling Heights. and and. Uh, he, he'll never forget in the truck uh, all the way home. I just ripped him apart, and uh, Neil was with us in the car, and he just sat silent while it took place. Needless to say, he stopped calling me when it was 10 degrees. But thank you so much for everything that you have offered interaction-wise with my family. I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Uh, for those of you that don't know on the commission directly behind the judge is his brother Mickey. Would you raise your hand up? Now the only upstart of this is he had to one up on his brother. The younger brother had to do one up on his brother again. Mickey retired from the as treasurer from city of Roseville not too long ago and he did that intensely in front of his brother so that he could say to his brother, ha ha, I retired in front of you. The Spatowski family is something to be proud of. Mom is super proud so I commend you both and the rest of the family. That's all I have. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. 
So Tulsky family has done this county many services or through their service and uh, we appreciate both of them very well. Their whole family's outstanding uh, individuals. They're a model of what you want from public leaders. High integrity, do their homework and are you know, responsible and we really appreciate you sincerely and uh, best luck to both of you and maybe we'll see you on a golf course this summer someplace. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any more comments? Very good. We'll close that one. Go to item 7B, a proclamation honoring the Worst Warriors for their 40th anniversary. I need a motion to approve. Support, Support Kleinfeld. Him. Very good. Um, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. As a reminder, there's an uh, event tomorrow night at 7.30 at uh, Zaccaro's, and you're all welcome to come out and attend where that resolution will be presented and uh, honoring the Wurtz Warriors. It'll be a good evening, and uh, they'll help raise some money for Special Olympics. So come out if you're able to. Item 8 is presentations. Uh, item 8A, I need a motion to receive and file the third quarter report. Thank you. Uh, Steve Schmeagel, have floor is yours. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you again. Hope everyone had a uh, happy holiday season. Uh, the uh, quarterly report for the third quarter of 2021 is before you. As I normally do, I kind of keep my comments to brief and ask any questions that I can while I'm here. I will continue to say that uh, the general fund is where my primary focus is and uh, that fund continues to perform favorably uh, on a budget to actual basis, both on the revenue side and the expense side. Of course, we won't have final numbers until middle of April, probably, when we get ready for the audit. Um, we'll have a decent idea where we stand in the middle of February when we close payables, and uh, you'll have the fourth quarter report uh, hopefully in March. It may not be completely final numbers, but you'll have pretty, pretty final numbers uh, in March. So again, uh, general fund is performing well, budget to actual. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. If I can't, certainly willing to meet offline or get back with you. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my program is uh, down, but uh, I'll take uh, any questions. Anybody have any questions on the report? Barb Zinner. Zinner. Commissioner Zinner. Okay. Sabatini. Commissioner Sabatini, do you have a question? Thank you, Chair. Hi, Steve. Hi, sir. Um, sure. So a couple questions just in regards to the capital plan update for Q3. So I'm looking at the fuel system upgrade. Um, I didn't see this in the 2021 plan for the 132000 and it looks like this was a transfer in from another project. That so either it must, must have been either a, I would assume, under budget, and I just um, I need, we want to get some clarity in it because in, in the sheet here it's basically saying that the board approval is not required. I'm just trying to get a little clarity on so that. So what item. we do, uh, can you refer me to the So page? it's on page, the, the, the actual transfer in and out details on page 79 specifically and then the summary on page 106 shows the line item. Uh, page, uh, uh, the agenda page 79 or uh, the report? The report. I don't know what page that would be in the agenda. Do you have a budget adjustment number that you could refer yes, me so to? Yes, so the amount here is showing 132651 and oh, there you are. Cents. I'm with you. So I th believe what happened, the board approved this transaction uh, sometime during 2021. I can't remember the exact time frame. I'm going to say July, August. Um, and what's happening is the roads is upgrading the fuel system, which they operate the entire thing. So we're paying a portion of it that basically a percentage based on county vehicles versus road vehicles. And I believe what happened there, and I'll confirm for you, is we were taking money from anticipated budget savings from the medical examiner's project. Okay. And we were moving that within that fund to kind of a thing. <clears throat> Um, so uh, that would have been an in and out. Now I will say if it's not on, and I don't think it is, it's probably not on the capital plan update. 
which it probably should be, so I'll correct that for the fourth quarter. Okay. So in situations where a project, you know, goes under budget, like that one specifically, we have the <coughs> additional funds. So um, you're just making that adjustment in, in the add deletes column, basically, and you're just adjusting right. your plan? On a yeah, right. So let me add this. So if you go to the very back of the quarterly report, and this particular transfer was not handled this way, so my apologies for that. But in the future, and you'll see this when you see the fourth quarter, the last page of this report is a balance sheet for Fund 406, which is the Capital Improvement Fund. So what we, what we should be doing and will do in the future is when projects come in under budget and are closed out, you'll see a transfer from the Capital projects fund into this fund 406 okay. and then a transfer out in this case and then you'll get detailed transaction histories along with this balance sheet so you so can see things going back and forth and I've mentioned this before that's sort of the checkpoint so you know there's almost 15 million dollars in this fund so that's the checkpoint for the board to see that we're accounting for everything going out and we're just and that we're bringing things to you that need to be brought you know so with any, any of the adjustments then, you're, you're coming back to the board for approval again to make those transfers within this fund? Not within this fund because they're capital projects funds. What will happen is we'll be coming to you for contract approval, in this case for the fuel system upgrade, and then you'll see that in and out on a future uh, quarterly update. Otherwise, it'll just sit in the fund. Otherwise, yeah. it just sits there for, you know, future use when we have a big project come up or something like that. Okay. You just haven't seen that activity yet because I think the fuel system upgrade was the first one. Well, we all, I forgot what we funded. We did something similar in the fourth quarter in I think November. And um, for last year, obviously the, the, the numbers aren't final. <clears throat> in regards to, you know, looking at what we had budgeted, uh, I know we kind of have kind of a your mark of about $10 million on an annual basis. Are we still staying on that, on that number? On your mark for capital, for capital outlay? It's somewhere in that neighborhood, yeah. Okay. It was 8.8 .8 million for 2021. I think it's mid nine million-ish for 2022. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Sabatini. Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Chair. Steve, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Uh, well. A couple of questions I have, I think, are more just me learning. Okay. Um, so, Commissioner Sabatini kind of hit on it. I had the same thing when I was looking at Public Works, oh, what pages, 59, 67. There's a couple items that transfer from prior year balance to a, a line item, and it says board approval not needed, even though it's above 30000 If you can explain that part of the process of if we use prior year then we don't have to do it or how does that work uh, can you give me a budget yeah, adjustment number and i might yep the one is forty three thousand. the other one's sixteen thousand. uh can you give me over to the far left under the reference column one two bu one two three four two two and okay. one two three five one zero four two two I think it's more of a process question than anything. Uh, so that involves a uh, a revolving fund that Public Works has for equipment, so it's not in the budget itself. So they fund that with various projects and money like that. So that's so, anything okay. in the 600 series is not in the budget, basically. Thank you. So what we're doing here is, even though something like that's not doesn't require board approval, what we're showing is, and Kyle had this question earlier in the week, is we're showing every, trans, every budget adjustment that we made, even if it zeroes out or isn't required, mm -hmm. to maintain the integrity of yeah. the numerical sequence so you can't, yep. someone can't say, oh, well, did you inadvertently? You provide the audit trail. Did you purposely exclude this? No. It provides it's providing audit the audit trail. Yep. yep. It's an audit trail. Um, second question. Thank you for that. Next one is timing. This is the quarter ended September 30th, and we're in... Mid to late January? Yeah, that's that's on me. So it should have been for you last month, actually. Okay. So normally, we will attempt and do our best to get it to you 45 days after the year end. Okay? So it would be 
in the case of December, it wouldn't be at the end of January, it'd be middle of February-ish. Is 45 days a best practice of larger counties around the country? It gives us time internally. I can't, I don't know that question, the answer to that question. It gives us time to compile the data yeah. in a timely manner. I just manner. know in the business world, 45 days is long for a closed Well, it, it sometimes <laughs> it depends on meeting agendas and dates and things like that. So um, in the case of December, for example, we won't close payables until I think it's the third Friday in December. So we've always gone in with year end, December year end in March. So that gives us some time to get, you get best numbers. Yeah. So what I try to do at least during the course of the year is keep you informed about how things are looking, yeah. generally speaking. In this case, I should have had it to you in December. The timing was a little off. Um, Similar to December, you've got September year-end year funds, so we wait for payables to close third week of October with the, budgeted, the budget schedule and holidays. Couldn't make November, should have made December. Got, okay. got busy doing Going some forward, other things. Going forward, it'll be better. Yeah. Got it. Uh, final question I have. Under emergency management, this is page 32. Uh, this is a summary page. Um, Part-time wages. Quarter to date actual is about sixty five thousand. Annual is two hundred sixteen thousand, and yet the budget was zero. Uh, I'm just wondering. See. You're on page thirty two of the report. Uh, uh, I assume thirty two of the report. Yeah. Uh, something got mixed up with. You're under public or um, emergency management. You said. Yeah. Because I'm not seeing that on page thirty. Two. Uh, it was part-time wages, you said? Yeah. So what's happening in there is, I'm going to, I don't want to speak off topic, but I'm going to make an educated guess that those are part-timers that were being paid to uh, perform, perform various tasks under the CARES Act. So we need to transfer those expenses out yet to the CARES Fund. So it, we'd see in, in the future another adjustment saying that money is going from the CARES Act money. Yeah, you're looking at the budget to actual. Budget. You're looking at the budget to actual statement, right. correct? So what you'll see eventually is no expenses, and then there's no budget, and that line shouldn't even show up. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you, Chair. Steve, that last page. So, so when you like i know the medical examiners it was like um several hundred thousand lower it is we just got the closeout letter from plant marine cressa maybe 10 days ago or less than two weeks so we still need to make that transfer and backdate it to the end of the year so when you say you transfer it if if it comes out of that capital outlay line item that we created to transfer into the capital outlay mm -hmm. projects thing does it go back into that line item? No, or it, it goes so into fund equity. So once it's gone from the general fund, it's it's kind of gone. So so then that's the idea is if it comes in under budget, we move it into the capital improvement fund for future use, essentially. Which is not the same fund. So if we <laughs> approve a million dollars for a project and you Correct. spend five hundred thousand on that project. Instead of that 500000 going back into that fund where we were approving projects, it goes into the another cap. fund. It, it goes into another fund. That you'll get complete accounting on of the ins and outs of that fund. But then you have discretion to spend that 500 elsewhere uh, in a different manner than you would have if it went back into that first fund. Is so that correct? So I, I will say this. If that, in that particular instance, if we moved 500000 back to the capital improvement fund, it sits there. You're getting a report every quarter of what all the transactions that happened in that fund. If we were going to spend any money out of there and for some other project, the contract would come back for you to you for approval, and then you would see that money being moved back into the capital projects fund. So everything that's coming out of the capital improvement fund in terms of transfers and, and should, be, the, should be traced back to a board action. If so it's under unless 30, it's a thirty-five thousand. If it's correct? under thirty-five, so you, could you, take, you could technically take that five hundred thousand. And we and, can do that out of the general fund line item as well. So that's no different. Okay. So, yeah. So you, the idea, Commissioner, is whatever we're taking out of this pool of money. It's there for various uses. You'll get an accounting every quarter of what went in and what went out. And unlike other 
line items, this one you also will roll over on particular projects. If they get pushed back for weather or, or whatever, you'll roll them over into the next year. Yes, yeah, so remember what we do is when the board approves a contract in any related budget amendment for a project, we fund 100% of the cost of that or projected cost in that particular year. And then in the case of the medical examiner's office, it gets rolled, over. It gets rolled back and rolled over. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Commissioner Sabatini on the second round. Thank you, Chair. Steve, so just to follow up with Commissioner Kleinfeld, so basically when that money gets moved over, per, per your report here, the capital improvement fund prior year carry forward was 14800000 Correct. And then we added another $856,000 and changed to that, so we're almost at about $16 million in your revised total for that improvement fund. So that's excess theoretically that we didn't spend from the capital uh, projects you're fund. You're getting the 800 and some thousand from the capital plan update, correct? Yeah, it's so, the last page. Right, so um, those are moves that I put on the capital plan that have not been made. It'll be part of the closing process for year end. Okay. So you will see, as I was mentioning, just like you said, that you'll see that the capital improvement fund should have 15.6 million or whatever the number is going to be. Okay. And then... Uh, this item here, your reference number, you can you can just send the information to our staff. But uh, the BU one two three six seven five, there's a prior year fund balance transfer, uh, prior year uh, fund balance there, and then there's contractual services and capital outlay. Can you just give us some more information on that? I I know I'm asking you on the spot, so if you could just look uh, into that and get back. Yeah, to I'll us. get you more information on that. I'd, I'd have to look and see what particular project that is, or uh, we're adding money. It's, it's a rollover of some kind, but I'll get back with you and what it. that is. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Sabatini. Uh, you kind of answered the question earlier, Steve, but <clears throat> when the fourth quarter closes out, there will be budget amendments need to be made for the fourth quarter, correct? That will be brought forward to us in terms of a no not necessarily we'll, we'll just leave the budget where it's at so you can see a true budget to actual comparison and how we're comparing category to category okay so we we don't make a practice of coming back necessarily and adjusting every line item to be close to budget we just kind of leave things where they're at okay and so that way you get a true reflection of what we're doing budgetarily and how accurate we are and those sorts of things so we can expect the fourth quarter next month March. March. Because we'll close payables for Q4 on February 18th. So then we need some okay. time to kind of get the... So we'll miss February because of that closing date. So then in March, I think it's March, I'm not sure what the date is, but third, third Tuesday probably. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> anybody else? I don't see anybody else on the list. There's been a motion made and to receive and file a report. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you, Steve. Have a good, day, Have a good evening. <laughs> Item 9 is appointments. Friend of a court advisory board. These are executive appointments with board concurrence. There's three vacancies. I need a motion to approve a, a, the three names. So move far. So far is there any discussion on this? I see no, no one's on this list. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. All right, thank you. Item 10 is Health and Services Committee reports. Um, items A through C. Can I get a motion to approve a 10A through C? Supports it. Is there any discussion on any of these? I don't see any. Uh, please vote.
Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. The Internal Com Services Committee report recommendations item A through F. Uh, can I have a motion to approve A through F? So move Van Sickle. Any discussion on any of these items? I see none. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Item 12 is Government Oversight Committee, a social media policy. I need a motion to adopt. Matusik moves. Support. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 13, Public Services Committee recommendations. Item A through I. And I have a motion to approve those. Motion to approve, Farrington. Support, Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item item 14. I need resolutions. I need uh, items, resolutions A through E. Is a, Can I get a motion to approve them all? Motion, motion by Sabatini. Support all. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 15 is public participation. This is an opportunity for public participation for those who wish to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any issue. Um, the floor is just please come forward, state your name, uh, and you have three minutes. My name is Lisa Emerson. I'm a lifelong Macomb County resident and a Macomb County employee of 32 years. I am here today in my capacity as a UAW Local 412 Unit 75 Chairperson. Also here to speak today is UAW Local 412 Service Rep Scott Trotter and President Jerry Wett. There are several members within our unit who work within the Prosecutor's Office. Those members are the most experienced and highly dedicated employees the prosecutor's office has. The union has come before you today to inform you about a series of events that you might not be aware of concerning the Macomb County prosecutor, Peter Lucido. Mr. Lucido is attempting to eliminate those highly experienced and dedicated union employees in favor of hiring employees of his choosing. At the same time, he has recently come before the board to expand his office to add additional employees because, as he has stated, he doesn't have enough staff. Mr. Lucido's actions against employees consist of targeted retaliation and harassment. As a result, he has created a hostile work environment. The union is availing itself of all remedies available to come to a resolution with Mr. Lucido concerning many issues, including disciplinary actions that are without just cause. Throughout the grievance process, Mr. Lucido has also had the opportunity to work with the union, yet refuses to participate in any meaningful way. He has even attempted to skip steps within the grievance process that is part of the collective bargaining agreement when his attempts to pressure members into retiring, taking demotions, or, seek, seeking, or to seek outside employment have failed with increasing frequency he began weaponizing both the disciplinary process and the Loudermill process to further retaliate and harass our members in his efforts to eliminate those employees without just cause. Due to the numerous incidents of targeted retaliation and harassment, the union was forced to file an unfair labor practice charge against Mr. Lucido, which is currently pending, along with other issues moving through the grievance process. 
The union would like to provide you with some examples of this and, go in, and can go into more detail. However, we only have so much time to speak. If the board is interested in speaking with union leadership we would like to meet and would like to meet with us, we would welcome the opportunity. Thank, thank you for listening today. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Trotter. I am a servicing rep for UAW Local 412. Um, I'm a current resident of Chesterfield and a resident of Macomb County for over 50 years. Uh, some specific examples of targeting retaliation and harassment by Macomb County Prosecutor Peter Lucido are as follows. Since January of 2021, Mr. Lucido has repeatedly pressured employees to retire, take demotions, or find outside employment. When those efforts didn't pan out for him, he resorted to laying off one of our members to utilize the funds from that position to create a non-union position. When he found out that our members have bumping rights under the collective bargaining agreement, Mr. Sol Mr. Lucido could not lay off the in intended person of his choosing. He went so as, as far as to seek advice to circumvent the collective bargaining agreement from the following agencies, the M Macomb County Ethics Board, the Ethics Committee at the State Bar, and the Prosecuting Attorneys Association of Michigan. In his communications to those three agencies, Mr. Lacido provided false statements. When called out by the union about him providing false and misleading statements to these agencies, Mr. Lacido chose not to amend his communications or correct this. After that didn't work, Mr. Lacido then targeted employees by imposing disciplinary action without just cause and even created new policies to further impose disciplinary action against an employee. There is a, uh, currently a dispute about whether or not this policy is legal. Because of the legal dispute, the county has uh, had to hire outside legal counsel costing the taxpayers in Macomb County thousands of dollars. While there is pending legal dispute about this policy, the employee was given a 10-day suspension by Mr. Lucido anyway. Uh, with respect to another employee, Mr. Lucido has even taken an active part of contacting other agencies and seeking outside employment opportunities on numerous occasions without the employee's request or consent. The same day as Mr. Lucido scheduled a lauder mill hearing against this employee, Mr. Lucido contacted a district court judge to put pressure on that judge to hire this employee. The union believes that Mr. Lucido is intimidated by this employee because of the previous held position as interim prosecutor and because she is a very highly respected woman. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Appreciate you letting me come here. Last time I was here was um, in 2017 with the former clerk. My name's Jerry Witt. I'm the local union 412 president. I've resided in Macomb County since 1950. I'm a little bit older than some of you here. I've worked, I've been working at Chrysler's for 53 years. I'm going to be short and sweet because everything they said is true and we would like to have an opportunity sometime to be able to talk longer because as you know you've been around you it's hard to say everything in three minutes. But this 2017 reminds me of today. We have an elected person that's coming in and wants to fire UAW people. And he's trying to, and he's gonna sue the executive to uh, fill up more openings, but he's not really after 10, he's after 13, because he wants to fire a couple UAW people, and I believe the other one's from uh, TPOAM. And he's doing it because he doesn't, he wants to get rid of the union people, and he wants to bring in his own help. His buddies, in other words. This is the same, if you look at the cases from Karen Spranger to today, what he's doing is the exact same uh, uh, scene, what he's doing. And it's not going to be accepted. I'm not going to let them push my people around because, first of all, before they're union people, they belong to, they work for Macomb County. They're professional people. They're lawyers, they're clerks, they're administrative assistants. Whether they're union or non union, nobody deserves to be looked at to fire to bring your friends in. This is the same very thing Karen Spranger did. It's the very same thing. This is a man that thinks he's above everybody else. If you listen to him, I watched the video today about where he's talking to a reporter about suing Mark Hackle. 
And he's talking about filling openings. And he says, I need to fill these openings. I don't have enough mops and buckets to do the job. Are you kidding me? Is that how he refers to Macomb County employees, whether they're union or non-union? This guy has got a problem. And I had a meeting with him on August 11th. And he's unreasonable. He won't listen. He won't get back with me. I told him I got an open door. He said, well, I got an open door. I said, well, I don't know when you're going to try to get away from the contract, because that's what he's doing. The three agencies is right here that he went to, trying to, trying to sub, uh, circumvent the contract. That contract was agreed upon by leaders of this Macomb County, uh, Macomb County and the leaders of the union. And we both are supposed to recognize that. And he doesn't want to recognize it. He's arrogant. And he thinks he knows more than anybody else, like showing me his office with all these new pictures he put up. 90% of them pictures he's in. That speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. And for him to make a statement, because I'm getting off track, to him to make a statement on a video like that, that he doesn't have enough mops and buckets to get the job done? Who does he think he is speaking to people like that? And I'm not just talking about union people. How about non-union people? Does anybody deserve to be referred to that? And he can't get out of it because that's what he was talking about. You ought to check that video out. But he's disrespectful. He won't talk. He hasn't called me like I said, you got a problem. You can't work things out with my union leaders. Then call me in. I haven't heard a peep from him. But he continues to come after us. Now he wants to take water mills. Next is Merck. Just so you know, today I made a phone call. Tomorrow I'll be sending the thing out because just as we did Karen Spranger, we will bring a UAW lawyer in and we will be to go into further process. If it's work charges, we will go to court on that. We we're going to start all over again. Do I want to do that? Absolutely not. The new clerk came in, Fred Miller. We didn't have no problems. The new clerk, Anthony, and I don't want to say his last name because I'll goof it up. We haven't had no problems with him. Candace Miller. You know, I belong to a Democratic Union. I'm an independent person, but I belong to a Democratic Union. Candace Miller, I was the one that took it to UAW leadership and had them endorse her because she's been fair with us. Do, I, do we get our way all the time? Absolutely not. Should we? Absolutely not. We work together. And for a union person that belongs to a Democratic Union, that's quite a feat to go and nominate somebody to get them to back them up and support her during the election, what they did. So I'm not up here picking on Mr. Lucido. I'm up here coming after him because he is treating your employees, your employees, we're all, they're your employees as well as their sheriffs have it like crap. Mops and buckets? Think about that. Mops and buckets. Who, who, who deserves that? Not none of the people I represent and surely not none of the non-union people either. None of them. And he's making fun of people that what? Clean up? Housekeepers? What would we do without housekeepers, huh? Our places would look like junk. We would not want to walk into these places. So my message is, this guy's got to be talked to. You need to take a look at him. Because my, my, my personal opinion, this is Karen, Karen Spranger in a man's body. That's the way I see it. Because he's doing the very same thing. Threatening union people, trying to get rid of them, and at the same time going to Sheriff Hack and go to Sue because he wants these openings filled. He wants also to fill the openings where he wants to fire people. These are professional people. They're professional people. They've been around a long time. Do we make mistakes? Do we do something? When a new leader comes in like me that I five years ago, I come in, I want to change things. Do you walk in there and start changing and changing the rules and don't tell nobody about them like he does? And then you try to discipline a person that's breaking the rule that you just changed and set it in your own thing because we all got our ways of running places. You can't, yeah, you can't do that. So my final message is I will be back. I can guarantee you if it doesn't stop, we will get a lawyer just as we did last time, and we will beat them in the charges. But how much is that going to cost the taxpayers? I don't want to do that. I'm a taxpayer. So I think that all of you need to take a serious look at this man, because he's Karen Springer all over again. And he needs to stop. It needs to stop for both of our sakes. Because I don't want to be up here coming up here. I didn't ever want to come back here after that last time. That's all I got to say. Thank you. And sorry, I get a little loud. That's the way I am. <laughs> Wasn't yelling. I get accused of that a lot. It's your right. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else under public participation? Please come forward. Yes, hello. My name is Darlene Dotzel, Shelby Township, Michigan. And I'm here today to ask that you would require our county clerk to release the results, detailed results, 
of the audit that he did back in the summer. We also want you to f uh, release the non-disclosure agreement that was signed with Mr. Ben Cotton on that audit. We would like to hear from him. We had a lot of reasons for this audit that we were demanding it, um, and we feel we need to go back to people to tell them what the results were, not just a little clip on the news that says everything's okay. We didn't see it. We would like to see the detailed re results of that audit from both him and from Mr. Cotton. And the reason that we even wanted to pursue this was back last early spl spring, there was a special election. I think it was the spring. I'm not quite sure of the date uh, for the Senate seat. And out door knocking through those communities, we were door knocking the vast, and I mean the very vast, majority of all the residents had two things in common. They said they knew nothing about the election, not a thing, didn't know anything about it. And they also said for those that knew about it, they said, you know what, we don't even want to go out and vote. We already, you know, it's just a scam. You know, our vote doesn't count. We really need to address the issues. And I also urge not only that you I, we want to see the results of the audit and Mr. Ben Cotton's statements and his response, but also the cost. What did we pay for this audit and what are we getting for the money? As taxpayers, we have that right. If we're footing a bill, we need to know what we're paying for. And we should be able to ask questions. He won't answer any questions at all and we really want those questions answered, as well as we feel that his office needs to be held responsible to ensure that every special election, he is either going through the township clerks or himself doing it, making sure that every voter knows there is this election. Again, there's another special election. Again, we're out door knocking. Again, a vast majority of the people are not aware of it. That's uncalled for. Every voter has the right to know that there is an election and that his or her vote will count. You have 30 seconds. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Anyone else wish to be heard? Please come forward. You have uh, three minutes. Hi, Commission. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Uh, my name is Rachel Eichhorst. I'm from Washington Township. I was here in December and I asked some questions and I didn't quite get um, clear answers, so I'm just here to ask again. Um, I had a speech prepared to talk about how um, our health departments are really just going after our kids, not specifically Macomb County, but the state and other counties in general. And um, I I'm kind of kind of abandon that and just focus on because I don't know that you're the audience um, to hear about that. But the the one specific question I do want to ask was from December. Um, I was here at the meeting when all of you voted unanimously to approve um, Mr. Cox's uh, request for COVID testing at um, with no upper limit. And I'm I know a couple of you questioned that and saying how can we vote on a budget where there is no upper limit stated. Um, and I appreciate that the couple of you that did that, but you still voted it unanimously. And I just don't understand how we can keep justifying that kind of money spent, um, especially when these tests that are being used um, in a very abusive form, especially in our schools. Um, children should have the right to come to school if they're not sick. They should not have to test to prove they're not sick when we know they're not sick. And yet, you all voted um, to have unlimited testing with no upper limit. I mean, who does that? Where is this money coming from? <laughs> and I just would like to know in you guys to focus and think about what is the end game for that. Um, clearly, we are not going to test our way out of COVID. We're not going to boost our way out of COVID. Um, we need to think of better ways to spend our money. I have yet to hear something from Macomb County about recommendations for early treatment options. Um, better health as far as vitamins and taking care of yourself. We just keep hearing about vaccines and testing. Um, and I just implore this commission to just try to do a better job on that um, when they come and ask you for more money. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else wish to be heard? Please come forward. Uh, can you hear me from here? Come, come to the speak to the mic so we can have you recorded, please. Can you hear me now? You can come. Yep, yeah, go ahead. It's fine. Okay, thank you. My name is Lori Harris. I'm a registered nurse. I've uh, lived in Macomb County my whole life. My grandfather was a very esteemed judge in this county, which doesn't really matter except that I have roots here. I am a grandmother of eight children, and I have three of them are in the Utica School District. And I am um, really concerned about the lack of uh, well, first I want to say the invocation prayer, that was lovely. Asking God to give you wisdom to keep people safe and make good decisions is great. So I'd like you to use that wisdom to come out with a, a proclamation that during this time of excessive COVID spread, that we would mask our children in school. And it may not be a popular opinion for some of you, but I'm watching all of you, almost all of you, unmasked, mingling, I have someone in my family dying from COVID right now, on a vent for a month. It's ugly, and our hospitals are dying. Our children are being hospitalized in greater numbers than ever during this pandemic. Uh, the increased risk of type 1 diabetes is being noted in children who've had COVID. Long COVID uh, problems can occur even with mild symptoms. We are, we are not protecting our children. So when my one grandchild got COVID, her two siblings go to two other schools, right? They're not, if they're not masked, they're just taking their potential into two other buildings. The simplest, best, easiest way that we can protect our children and our families and our teachers and our hospital staff is to mask up. That is simple. It's effective, and it's worth doing it. 17,000 cases a day is our average right now. That's huge. I contact traced all last year for the state of Michigan. 17,000 cases. If just 1% have to go into the hospital, how many is that in a day? 170, right? Because 10% is 1,700. So 170 people a day going into the hospital accumulate that. They don't stay for one day. They might stay for a week or a month. Our hospitals can't take it. So I am begging you to not listen to the nonsense at your last meeting about how the school district was going to mass inoculate the children. That isn't going to happen. You have 30 seconds. That option is there. But look at the science and look at the truth and listen to our hospitals. Listen to our parents. Listen to our teachers. Let's keep the kids in school, but let's do it safely. We've got to mask up our kids. And you all should be masked unless you want to be on a vent. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? No. 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 Anyone else wish to be heard on public participation? One more time. Anyone else want to be heard on public participation? Thank you. You only have one time for customers. What? I can't speak. Time. No, you already had your three minutes. All right. We'll close public participation. Um, and item 16 is commissioner comments. Uh, Commissioner Haw. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I spoke to Commissioner Nard uh, prior to the meeting uh, to congratulate her on being elected Vice Chair Traffic Safety for SEMCOG. Um, I will say that she is extremely ill and asked me to convey that to the commissioners. Um, she's waiting for some testing to come back and hopes to be able to rejoin us next week. So thoughts and prayers go to Michelle. Thank you. 
Thank That's you. All I have, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hoff. Anyone else under public comment? Commissioner comments. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Just uh, thank you, Crystal, for giving us uh, uh, your explanation on questions that were raised yesterday. Thank, thank you, you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Anybody else? Okay, we'll close. Uh, Commissioner comments. Uh, item seven is uh, need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have to speak specifically. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes, we're going to go into closed session with independent counsel to discuss pending litigation, Hackle versus Macomb County Board of Commissioners, case number 2018-001252-CZ, and a confidential attorney client memo. Please vote. We're back in open session. Uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Motion to concur with independent counsel's opinion. Support Very good. Is motion made support any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Very good. Well, mine didn't come up for a vote. Oh. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if mine did. Well, there's a... There's Yay. I, yes. Very yes. good. Next, you need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. All those in favor say aye. Well, please vote. Aye. Hold school. Please vote. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. Have a good evening.